I'm here today with Jonathan Penny. Jonathan is the Dean of the School of Arts and Culture at Red Deer Polytechnic. He publishes short fiction, poetry, plays, and scholarly analysis of literary works. He's currently the president of Mormon Scholars in the Humanities. Um, until today, actually, we're, we're at the conference today. Right. Um, and today we're looking at um, the Second Nephi 31 to 33 scriptures. And this is a piece by Lisa DeLong. It's called Baptism by Fire. Um, it's a sort of mixed media piece. It has gold leaf, watercolors, graphite, ink, and acrylic on marbled paper. So Jonathan, can you tell us a little bit about the painting and how it relates to these scriptures? Yeah, I think the key connection in my viewing of the piece is, uh, is, is just that simple phrase, that central phrase, baptism by fire. That's at least the first uh, point of connection, I think. And as I look at it, I see in the background, first of all, an incredible and striking depth. I'm not usually one for brightly colored images mm -hmm. uh, in, in fine art. But this one is really, really striking and beautifully balanced. The depth with uh, uh, the contours in the background and the contrasting colors, and, and it, that's, to me, the, the connection with fire. Mm -hmm. You think about lava flow or that swirling heart of, uh, of a very active flame. Um, that, that is evocative. And then, of course, the central component is immersed, surrounded by the edges, so the, the image extends beyond the borders of the, of the geometric components. So again, suggestive of, I think, that, that immersion. And I don't know, as I think about that even more, is, is there a sense that, that that top layer is potentially sinking into, uh, into the background as well? Mm -hmm. When I look at the geometric shapes, and I think a little bit about, um, about the Star of Lakshmi, the uh, symbol of hope, directionality, the points of a compass being represented in the, in the eight-pointed star, which is repeated as a motif uh, in a variety of ways throughout as a star, as an octagon, uh, really, really across the piece. And I think the number eight has traditionally had symbolism as the start of a new life or a new week, right? There's yeah, seven days in a week. So certainly the seasonal cycles yeah. and passage and so on. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. the eighth day is the first day of a new start. First day of a new day. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, and then just the striking patchwork penis of, uh, of that top layer, um, uh, the quilted nature of it is, uh, is a, of course, a nod to Mormon culture. Mm -hmm. Not just Mormon, but culture, uh, in, in particularly in the American uh, context. Um, and, and with that, I think very much in LDS theology, a, a nod to generations or mm -hmm. to, to genealogy. Uh, so the connection to the scripture is not simply one of image, I suppose. It is, it is one of a reflection on, uh, on both that generational experience of, of baptism and, and allegiance to uh, the church, um, but also I think the complexity and layering of, of, of what those cycles, those seasons add to us as, as individuals. And that takes me back to the, to the three chapters. So I'm less interested in the kind of legalistic elements of those chapters uh, than I am the kind of core, humane gospel at the heart of them. And so I would read chapter 31 through the lens of a secular humanist, chapters 32 and 33 through the lens of what I do as a poet, mm -hmm. which, you know, word and spirit and inspiration, and the muses and all of these things, of course, coming very uh, clearly to my own mind. And thinking, thinking about my own work, I found a piece that I, that I think might be relevant here, which uh, oh, I'm happy to read. Oh, I would love that, yes. Uh, it's a short piece embedded in a longer uh, epic poem. Uh, this piece is called A Sermon. Behind all scripture, before the tegument and quill, above the vellum or the scroll, in finger and in fist there is always this wisdom and this will. Do good, be kind without the fear of punishment, without hope of reward. Rise above lust and greed for rising's sake. Seek silence and join in warm laughter. Weep with all others, cause no pain, and when you do, ask verily to be forgiven. Change, grow, bless all else. Be true to truth, but be not cocksure, 
arrogant, superior, or smug. For there is truth enough for all, and truth is found, not foundling, in all rising selves and all blessing selves and in all suffering and all joy. We are its makers and its sayers after all. Let then all truth be true to kindness, goodness, growth, and joy. These are bright and enough. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much for sharing that today. Thank you, Jenny. Appreciate the invitation.